Hey guys, Kevin here with the Honey Badger. So I thought I'd record a quick video because this is the fourth or fifth time I've seen this problem come up outside of my own experience. I've helped uh, now, I'd say four people uh, diagnose this problem on their own car and it was exactly the same thing. I've had two fail on me, so very familiar. But if you're getting uh, code P0020 and then the, it's the other bank is either P0010 or P0030. I can't remember which. But if you're getting an error about cam position, it's very, very, very likely to be one of these, depending on which bank you're at. So, you know, bank one, bank two, that's a good way to check. But these connections are super weak. They, they fail constantly. So it's not the typically the plug itself, and it's not the solenoid that's underneath the valve cover here and inside the front engine plate. It's the set of wires coming out of the plug itself. So if you look really closely, you can see the kink in the, oh, sorry, the kink right there above my nail. Like, it's just ridiculous. I've gone through two harnesses. This has failed both, or both sets of harnesses have had problems with this. This harness is brand new and I've had problems with it. It's just ridiculous. So if you're getting this error, it's likely to be, in my experience, most likely to be the one that's further down. So this guy here on the passenger side, or the one down here is the most susceptible because it's near the air box. So if you're moving your air box around or anything like that, this is just very susceptible to getting, you know, wangered and, and pressure and things like that. So keep that in mind. But yeah, if you're getting any type of air about cam position sensor in a car that is otherwise running perfectly fine uh, or otherwise was running uh, perfectly fine, very good chance that it's a wiring issue. The solenoids are very, very robust. I have another video where I talk through that. I'll put it in the link. But the, the solenoids that are in the front engine cover on the GT350 are very, very uh, robust. Like, you're very not likely going to break that and have any problems with that. It's possible, but it's very unlikely. You're far more likely to have a bad engine harness before that. The good news is I'll also put it in the link uh, in the description, but you can buy this plug on its own. I'll warn you now, it's stupid expensive. It's like 40 some dollars, but you can buy this plug. You could also go ahead and try to repin it yourself if you want to do that. But uh, my recommendation is just buy the plug and replace it if your engine harness is otherwise good. If you've had any problems in the past with your engine harness or you've been rough on it, like you know people have pulled wires or pulled plugs by the wires, things like that. I recommend just replacing the engine harness. It's quite a bit of work, but it is doable with the engine in the car if you remove the strut tower brace and the intake manifold. And it's about $200 if I remember, which if you feel like you're gonna have multiple plug failures, it's worth the peace of mind. But uh, last thing, one way you can check if this is your culprit, start the car, jiggle them around. Because if you start messing with this and it, it works, then it doesn't work because it's shorting in and out, in and out. The car will run fine and then it'll start to, you know, it'll run, it'll start to have a rough idle. Then it'll run fine, then it'll have a rough idle. So it's a really good, easy way to detect it. Uh, more, you know, a more thorough way is to do a continuity test and a resistance test and all that kind of stuff. And that's all in the engine manual. But if you're getting this problem, please look there. That's very, very, very likely your problem.